Hi everybody, sorry about the racket. Uh, they're working on clearing the leaves here and that way if we do get another freeze, there won't be any leaves on the ground to cause people to slip and fall. So they're working on clearing it and when they get the chance and everything. So sorry about the racket and the noise. They'll be gone in a minute. They're working on this strip down this way. So um Hey Nancy! My thing's working again, as you can see. Now I hope it does its job in recording and able to post on my YouTube channel. I don't know what happened Monday. I really don't know why I did that. Uh, I think the system is having some issues. And I noticed they changed the algorithms again. Hey Dorothy! Good seeing you! How's the weather back there? Hope not too bad. We've been having over the weekend and yesterday, get this, fog, freezing fog, and freezing drizzle, which makes the roads like a ice skating rink. You don't drive, you slide. <laughs> so, uh, it's right now 39 degrees, and they do have another alert again hold on a second let me check something um ah four day warming trend hmm good they will free freeze <coughs> okay good uh I I don't mind it you know cold but I don't like it when it freezes because it makes many of us here in the apartment complex uh, vulnerable to faults. And some of us are fighting uh, osteoporosis and osteopenia, and which in case with me, I have both. So I have to be careful. Um, and uh, I got a new splint for my fingers. It's getting better, but what this does, I'm going to put this on now. What this does, it helps uh, the flexor tendon right here. I still have that lump there, but the flexor tendon to straighten and set myself out and heal. So I do hope when January comes around, when I see my orthopedic surgeon, uh, I'll be seeing his assistant actually and see what she thinks. Um... I'm surprised he did not take an MRI of it and find out what's really doing, what the tendons are really doing, instead of just by looking at it. Because by looking at it, it can fool you, too. So, um, it's getting better. Uh, I don't wear it at night because I still have a tendency to, you know, hurt, hurt my fingers doing with this. Because this is very, very stiff, okay, the braces. And so... It's easy to bump it and easy to hurt it, so I have to be really careful. Um, now, as you see on my title, it's basically it's winging it um, today. Uh, I didn't have time to write up my. I tried writing up my no uh, my production notes, but Loki here kept walking across the desk and kept. Interrupting me. Good. Sit tight. Oh, wow. You got a lot of snot on your nose. You okay? I don't know if he's fighting a sinus infection or he is fighting a cold or what the deal is. But when he sneezes, he sneezes a little snot out. It's not yellow or anything. It's just white. He's feeling his oats today. <laughs> He's a funny cat. Um, so anyway, um, as you know, the last three days have been tributes and two funerals of Rosalind Carter, who was the first lady to President Carter. I was shocked of how President Carter looked. He really went downhill fast. Um, and of course, being up there 99 years old, you know, Depends on what your genetics does and everything. Um, he seemed to be alert enough and everything. He just 
he's just extremely frail now, and apparently he's in the wheelchair all the time now. Uh, he can't really walk, per se. Um, he did, if I remember right, they said when he was in the Navy, he served on board a submarine. Uh, he was, I think, slightly injured in that little escapade with the waves and everything. And um, so anyway, um, he had some injuries to that. But otherwise, he looked okay, but he just looked gotten older. Uh, the funeral was beautiful, and it was well said, and the family did their best by him and everything, and of course she's being privately buried today at their home place, their home ranch, and their home farm. So, um, they do that all the time in the south and in the east coast, those families that have private graveyards and bury their loved ones there, it's that way in Texas too. Uh, it kind of takes up less space for, you know, regular churchyards. Uh, here we do have some, some of the regulations here are a little too stringent, and they should allow families to bury their own families on their own property. So, anyway, what's going on today with you, huh? Loki, what are you doing? Oh, he's chasing his tail. So anyway, uh, that going on, and of course Melania Trump was there at the memorial service yesterday. Well, you know, people are seeing they're bad mouthing her and everything, but you re if you really think back and remember how pre how president no longer president how Trump treated her at his inauguration, did you see how he browbeated her? Okay. He was controlling her. And he was not treating her as an equal partner or anything else. He told her, like, you will do this, you will do that and everything else. And I don't think he allowed her to make any good decisions on what she wants done. And it looked like to me that she did not really want to be first lady. She did not want the job, okay? She felt that she was not up to task for it. And, um, frankly, if, if, if she should do this, she should divorce his ass and take everything that she has from him and you know, be happy and be happy with Baron. Right now she's concerned about Baron. He's gonna be finishing high school next year and apparently he's going to a public school, not a private school. And um, and Baron gets, he wanted to be an architect. He does not want anything to do with his dad's so-called business or anything else. And she doesn't want anything to do with the business. And so I have a feeling that Trump has been controlling her every move, what she could say, what she can't say, and everything else. Really, that's not a partnership. It isn't at all. So, in some ways, I feel sorry for her. I really do. And I think she was kind of forced into this marriage because her father wanted her, her, father wanted her to marry well and not marry for love or anything else and that that's not the thing to do so. anyway uh as you know of course he who shall not be named is still in deep doo doo uh trump tried filing a lawsuit regarding the the ballot thing the judge threw it out he threw out the lawsuit he said it's frivolous um, so Trump has been losing in every aspect in the court, and I'm sure by spring he will be in prison. He won't be, because he, he's not really campaigning. He hasn't even tried, he, he doesn't even have the money to campaign. And frankly, I think now the Federal Elections Commission should just yank the rest of the fam funding from him and said, 
Nope. You're kicked off the ballot. You're kicked off the running. Okay. Right now, the two that are running head and head on the Republican side is Nikki De uh, Nikki Halley and uh, Chris Christie. Okay. Chris Christie, some of his policies I do agree with, but some of them I don't. He's more of the old school Republican. He's not the radical crap that you see, okay, or you feel the manga crap that you see. Uh, he's more old school. Uh, he knows how government works. Uh, he's been a federal prosecutor. He knows how the laws work, and he said Trump will be in prison. His evidence is so strong against him, it's not even funny, okay? So, we'll see how all that goes later on. Um, also today, I saw the news. Uh, they had a real, you might say, short-term windstorm that hit Washington, D.C., and the national Christmas tree fell over. It was blown over by 40 mile an hour plus winds. Uh, they're able to assess the damage on it, bring it back up, and secure it better, and just hope it stays there until after the holidays. Um, yeah, it fell, fell right in front of the White House um, for a few, year, few, year, few yards off the White House, it fell. Uh, luckily, there was nobody there. Nobody was hurt or anything, thank goodness. Um, well, when you have a 160-foot-tall fir tree uh, fall over, that can cause a lot of damage. Uh, there were no buildings or anything around. It missed the fence. By the way, it missed the fence. Missed the White House fence by this much. Uh, <laughs> they were going, Phew. at least we don't have to replace that one. Uh... <coughs> I'm sorry, all of this fog and everything's going on here. It's not helping with the air quality. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's what basically has been going on. Um, and there's other things going on as well. Hey, Carolyn! Oh, you're decorating. Well, I only have one decoration. I lost a good majority of my time decorations over the years through the moves that I had to do from 2012 to uh, 2010 through th 2012 uh, I lost pretty much all my de decorations either they got stolen or swiped or purposely broken but I lived at the two homes uh, there they claimed to be friends but they showed their true colors and there were one person did break break a few, and I go, I don't do it to your stuff, so why are you doing it to mine? And this one person goes, oh, because I want to. No, that's bad manners. You don't do that. And so that's why I got to the point where I said, get my own, own apartment, my own place, and not having to deal with pe people like that. And, of course, I haven't seen them for... 10, 15 years, uh, the last one that I moved from, she, her house was having serious issues, structural issues, and also was leaking gas, and I said, you have to get that fixed now, because that is deemed a, not only a health hazard, but a safety hazard, you have to get that fixed, well, she kept digging in her heels, oh, there's nothing wrong with it, I said, you're leaking gas, what part you don't understand? I said, one, one, move, the whole place is going to blow, and you're going to damage homes around you. And I said, I don't want to get killed in this. And I'm sure you don't want to get killed in this. And your cat. Well, after I left, her cat uh, was outside, spotted the owner, I guess, and he ran toward the owner, Okay, which is good. And even her daughter was frustrated with her and said, you have to get this fixed. 
and um, even her son-in-law put his foot down. He said, "You will get this fixed," because they were they were they had enough of her being stubborn about it and being a being obtuse and not being very smart. Well, toward the end, she got fired from Safeway because uh, she worked second time around. She retired the first time. Second time around, they decided to suspend the program for retirees, and because there were like two or three, re two or three retirees working there, and they said, "Well, it's not worth them enough," so they basically gave her the boot. But she still kept her retirement. But um, she kept breaking the rules. <laughs> so, and you think somebody would learn from that? So anyway, that part of my life was over. Uh, I'm not going to do that type of thing again. Uh, I should have never done it, but I had really nowhere to turn to. And this was after my divorce. And, you know, everyone goes through uh, tough times. Well, that was one of the toughest I ever went through. Because you're so used to having the comforts of home, family, and everything else. Well, my after... I lost my parents and everything. It, to my sister, family wasn't important. And I'm going, <laughs> yes, it is important, Karen. So, um, so I'm trying to make new family, buy new friends, and, you know, everything. Um, oh, and those that are in the senior like you and I are, we're in the senior part. I tried go go grandparent yesterday. Uh, they're a they're a car service for seniors. They help with housework. They help with groceries. They help with um, you know getting to their to and from their appointments. And I had to use service yesterday because my one church friend was taking her car in to get it serviced or get it looked at, and she didn't trust her car entirely for long distance. So I used Go Go Grandparent to go down and get new brakes for my hand. Uh, they're very, very good. They're very conscientious, and yesterday they were, <laughs> they were having problems with their system. <laughs> their prompt system, everything on their phone, I said, you guys need to put in prompt saying, pick up from drop-off destination. And that would automatically get you a, a driver, okay? And or return, or a prompt that says return home, okay? Well, when I asked for pickup, I was meaning pick up down at my destination. I was in downtown Piala. And Miguel went to my apartment and she called me. I said, no, I'm not there. I said, I'm down at the uh, East Main Olympic Sports of Medicine. And that's why I was trying to, you know, I was having trouble with the system because it kept saying, no, try again, no, try again. And uh, she goes, okay, well, she's going to get with her di dispatcher. So she got with her dispatcher, and we had a three-way conversation. And um, dispatcher goes, they're a little tired of the system acting up the way it did because it caused a lot of problems with other drivers too because they're all on the same system. Now, Coco Grandparent is made up of partnered by Uber and uh, Lyft. Two car service companies, they came together and they created a new service for seniors, okay, to get around safely instead of just using a regular Lyft or Uber uh, drivers. This one gal that took me home, she does both. And she said they're doing a program where get safe drivers and help, and she loves to help people. And I, like I said, I was a little frustrated with the telephone system on this. She goes, yes. And I said, well, next time I'm going to text message instead of, uh, you know, give me a call. And she said that might be a good idea. 
Uh, let's see. On to other things. Um, well, everybody's getting ready for the Christmas season. Um, and, of course, the end of the month is always, you know, your funds are low, a little low in the end of the month. Um, but I'm still working on my stores. Don't worry about that. I'm still working on both of them. And I'm going to see if I could get a few more things straight now. It just takes still research and do stuff like that. I know it's been, I've been saying this for a long time. And for some that take forever and some others, it's no time at all. So it depends on what you do. And I do e-commerce and I do the print, you know, auto print. And so, um... I'm working on that, and I'm going to set up, I'm going to put new, two new links on my YouTube channel for that. So I can promote my stories that way through YouTube. Um, I'm not very happy with the advertising aspect of it. So, uh, also I dropped my advertising from Facebook. I, de I deactivated it, and... I said, no, because you guys sit there and put in restrictions where I can't advertise. You have all these um, scammers and bots and everything else and scare people away. And I go, you guys need to fix this. Facebook needs to protect its users better by going after Scott uh, bots and scammers. And they need to stop putting people like you and me that speak the truth into Facebook jail. That's one of my pet peeves with Facebook. And Facebook, if you're listening to this, if you block me or do everything else, then I think a class action lawsuit by users should be filed against you. You're forgetting how things are set up together and why it was set up. Okay, if you're going to be in business doing social network, then you need to listen to your users. You need to protect your users. <coughs> <coughs> Other social platforms don't do like you do. Because they know the value of their users. And, um, Zuckerberg, you need to stop. You need to start using the truth. Stop the disinformation and everything else. And people need to start calling out those that put out the disinformation. Or say, okay, before you put out your facts, everything else, and say, hey, this is the research I've done, and... You know, show the research or whatever. Um, I hate it when you have a, like the GOP that puts disinformation out there and they promote it. Uh uh. Be, be careful, GOP. You're going to find yourself disinformed. So, uh, people are more and more waking up. They are, uh, a lot of them have left the GOP and went independent or going democratic, okay? A good majority went independent, but they do vote democratic, and they vote saying, hey, we want the right person for the job. And that's what it's about. Elections is about numbers, and it's also about getting the right person the job for it. Now, as far as people sitting there yelling and screaming about age regarding President Biden, I'm laughing. I go, President Biden is very, very smart. He's very, very sharp. And so what? He's 80 years old, okay? He's always been in shape. He has a very strong work ethic, uh, which is through his Irish ancestry, they have a very strong work ethic, okay? Anybody that's descended from Ireland or Scotland or the European, you have the work ethic right there. Um, 
So stop yelling about age. Uh, it's about smarts, it's about what they know and what they've learned and what they have had experience in doing. As for he who shall not be named, he did not even do it. He did not even bother to learn the job. So he should have never been elected to the house, White House. It should have never happened. But he cheated. And he cheated through the help of Russia and cheated through the help of those that helped him cheat. And it's not going to happen this time around. Okay? Because he got caught and now he's been indicted and... Like everybody else, he should be thrown in the pokey. So, anyway. Uh, okay, well, it's the end of my chat. Uh, I will see you guys on... Let me check my calendar. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a minute. Let me check my calendar. Um... Okay, uh, I will see you on Friday at 1 o'clock as always. And I hope my, uh, this time it'll, <clears throat> I get my download, able to download my video to my YouTube channel. Uh, like again on Monday, I don't know why it didn't do that. So. Anyway, I love you guys, and I will see you on Friday. Okay? Love you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Stay safe. Especially those in the snowy areas. Okay? Okay. Bye-bye.